In this video, let's take a look at the scale option by first selecting it in our options. With scale selected, we can click on each individual z-sphere to scale it, drag downwards to scale up, and upwards to scale down. You can use this to scale individual z-spheres in areas where you would like to adjust the volume in these particular areas. We can also use our joint links to scale the chain. Simply first click on a z-sphere to show the connector links. Now click and hold on the link and drag downwards to scale the chain larger and drag upwards to scale the chain smaller. Selecting different links in the chain will allow you to adjust the scale of different parent-child connections. Lastly, let's discuss the rotate mode, which is extremely useful in adjusting z-spheres, particularly in a chain. First, I'll select it in our options here, and by clicking on a connector link, this will show the connector link joints. By clicking and dragging on this link, this will rotate along this pivot point. Each time we click to show the connector link, you can see the top circle becomes the parent pivot point, and all other z-spheres in the chain will rotate along this pivot point. We can continue to select different pivot points for other options. If you think of these like a skeleton, then instead we are rotating along the pivot points of what would be a character's shoulder, elbow, and wrist. By clicking and dragging upwards on an individual z-sphere, this will rotate around the orientation of the selected sphere and will also rotate all directly connected z-spheres. This feature is very useful when we have many z-spheres growing off of a single z-sphere that may need to be adjusted. Let's create a simple example for this, and in this case I'll create a basic hand. If these z-spheres represent a shoulder, elbow, and wrist, then I'll switch back to the draw mode and add more z-spheres to start building fingers from the wrist. As I'm beginning to draw in these z-spheres, I'm using a combination of the draw mode and the move mode to start to pull these into place. Each z-sphere that I add to the wrist is representing a joint for the hand. So using draw and move mode, we can easily rotate around and continue to build out these fingers. And then as we add each additional chain of z-spheres here, simply using the move mode, I can pull these fingers out and start to adjust the positioning as well as the length for each finger. Once the fingers are roughly laid in place, we can easily go back to the draw mode and start to put in additional z-spheres for the rest of the joints for the finger. By putting these z-spheres in place, we're able to position and pose the fingers as they would exist in real life. So here I'm just slightly adjusting with the move brush, playing around with the angle and the space between each joint. And once we get these z-spheres into place, we can easily switch back to the rotate mode to start to change the spacing as well as the rest of the angle for all of these z-spheres. Now that I've finished posing the fingers with the rotate option, I'm noticing that there's not enough space for the palm of the hand, so simply going back with the draw mode and adding a new z-sphere for the wrist, and this will allow me to switch to the move mode now, which I can pull this back and give me more space for each finger as well as the knuckle and joints. One last note is we can use the scale mode to go through and select these chain of spheres for the fingers, and we can actually scale these like so. If you'd like to change the proportions of the hand, using the scale mode is a very beneficial feature. Now with a chain of z-spheres for each finger, I can select the root sphere here and actually change the twist and rotation of the hand. Also, by adding the additional z-sphere for the wrist, this is giving me another point of articulation which will allow me to scale the entire hand with all of these fingers as well as giving me a new point where I can actually rotate, which will allow me to bend and flex the hand. If there's not enough space or too much space between the wrist and the hand z-spheres, 
simply using the move mode to pull this closer and bridging the gap between that, allowing me a more realistic rotation for the hand. So that covers the basics of using the draw, move, scale, and rotate options with Z-Spheres. Once we've completed this process, we need to turn our Z-Sphere preview into a sculptable mesh. In the next video, I'll discuss how to go through this process. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.